Arabs stop dealing in dollars, America will come on its knees immediately. King Faisal said that we are Badus, we are Bedouin, we are Arabs, we can go back to the desert. What will happen to you when we stop giving you oil? Nobody there to challenge against the Christian. Only the Muslim there to challenge against the Christian. The brother has said emotionally that the Christian of the Western country, they look down upon the Buddhists, the Muslims, the Hindus, and no one dares to challenge the Western Christians except the Muslims. Brother, I slightly differ. What you are saying is right. All Muslims don't have the guts to challenge the Western world. There are some Muslims, like Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad. All the Muslims don't have the guts. And I am a person who is not very much in favor of politicians. There are very few politicians who I respect. And one of them is Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad. And I remember when I met him the first time several years back in Abu Dhabi, we were discussing, and he said that if the Muslims, if the Arabs stop dealing in dollars, America will come on its knees immediately. <laughs> there are few politicians who I really care. One was King Faisal of Saudi Arabia. He had the guts. I remember when you read his biography, that when oil was discovered, he said, let's have the meeting in the desert. And that time when they pressurized the Muslims, King Faisal said that we are Badus, we are Bedouin, we are Arabs, we can go back to the desert. What will happen to you when we stop giving you oil? <laughs> and I believe one of the things of Dr. Tun Mahathir Muhammad was that if he had if he had the control of the oil, what the Arabs had, he would have ruled the world. <laughs> That's why I said in my lecture of terrorism, Muslim monopoly, that most of the terrorist acts, directly or indirectly, are related to politicians. They try and create the vote bank. They create all this problem. In Islam, we do not believe that we should look down upon one another based on caste, color, or creed. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakin wa unsa wa jalnaakum shu'uba wa qaba ila litaarafu inna kamakum in the law yatkaakum inna law alimin khabir. O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you will recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only way one human being can be superior to the other human being is not by wealth, it's not by color, it's not by creed, it's not by sex, but it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it is piety, it is righteousness. In Islam, we do not believe one human being is superior because of wealth or color or caste or creed. It is taqwa. And I do agree with you. I do agree with you totally that the Western world, they think that they are superior. They think they are superior. The only way you can be superior is by being extra God conscious, by being righteous, by being pious, not by setting rules. And when the Western world talks about justice, when they talk about freedom of expression, if it does not hurt them, you have freedom of expression. If it hurts them, no freedom of expression. And the Western world talking about justice, I feel that one of the most unjust countries in the world are the Western countries. <laughs> they talk about justice, but they are far away from justice. However much they are trying to attack Islam, how much they are trying to attack Islam, Islam is growing. Islam is growing. There are, mashallah, few Muslims who speak against the Western world, and the Western world tries and shut their voice. That's what they tried to do to ex Prime Minister, but mashallah, Allah helped him and he came up again. We know the history. And that's what they do that those Muslims who speak the truth, 
because of my being very vocal and speaking the truth. The Western world doesn't like me speaking the truth. I'd like to give an example. I have been to UK several times. In 2010, when we had had the Wembley Arena, we had had the NEC Arena in Birmingham. There, the Home Secretary took objection to one of my statement. I said that killing innocent people is prohibited in Islam. And I said that thousands of people killed in the Twin Tower is to be condemned. The thousands of human beings killed in Twin Tower blast in 9-11 is to be condemned. More than 50 people killed in the London tube blast is to be condemned. More than 180 people killed in Bombay in the train blast has to be condemned. But I told the Muslim, don't put a full stop. Besides condemning all this, I also condemn the thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan, in Iraq and Palestine. So the Home Secretary of UK put a ban, Zakir cannot enter UK. I told that the thousands of Americans killed in the Twin Tower I condemn, more than 50 Britishers killed in London condemn, more than 180 Indians killed condemn, but I was careful that thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan. I didn't say thousands of Afghanistanis, because you know the Western world considers some are terrorists. So I was careful in using my statement, thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Palestine, so they want to ban me. They talk about freedom of expression, as long as you don't expose them, they don't mind. Once you expose them, they don't like freedom of expression. So I do agree with you, but Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah. However much they try and suppress Islam, Islam is spreading. The more they try and suppress Islam, the more Islam is spreading. Whatever they do, because Allah has given a promise that this deen will prevail over all the deens. And today, what the Western world is fearing maximum, they fear Islam. That's the reason they're bringing all these restrictions, etc. But what they do, inshallah, we believe in the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Islam will spread and is bound to spread. Allah doesn't require me or other people to make Islam spread. Allah has given a promise in the Quran and inshallah, inshallah, very shortly, you will see this coming true that the power from the Western world will be taken away. Hope that answers the question.